Beginner rider Chloe is about to take on her toughest challenge ever, trying to race the 100 mile epic that is called Big Sugar out here in Bentonville. And we are gonna be doing it on bikes designed with comfort and compliance in mind in order to help us ride as fast as possible. There's loads of genuinely exciting and interesting tech and details to run through on these bikes, such as the bonkers looking fork, carbon fiber wheels that can be recycled, super wide tire clearance thanks to some bottom bracket wizardry, and how ice is used to make the bikes more comfortable. And it's thanks to the support of Lauf Bikes and Forge and Bond Wheels that this epic adventure has been made possible. And also, because the basis of our bikes are only going to go as fast as we can ride them, we've also had the help of Humango's AI-powered coaching platform to whip us into shape. And if you want to see how we get on in the race, well, you need to head over to GCN for that video. So we are both going to be racing on the Lauf Siegler, but the first thing I want to discuss is not the fact that Chloe's bike is white and my bike is pink, but I want to discuss this absolutely bonkers looking fork. This unique design was pioneered by Lauf some 10 years ago, and it provides 30 millimeters of travel. I mean, mountain bikers out there will think that might not sound like much, but Lauf are saying because of the way this fork is designed with zero friction in the system and minimal unsprung mass, it makes it great for absorbing the high frequency vibrations you get when you're riding on gravel. Not only does this improve comfort, but it also speeds you up and improves traction too. And although the forks look the same on our bikes, there is a difference. So the small and extra small bike uses the same fork, which has a 15% reduction in spring rate compared to the fork which is used on the medium and large bikes. This is to account for the difference in rider weight. Now that difference in rider weight, as well as body shape and size, dictates the only differences between our two bikes in terms of the saddles we're using, the crank length, the handlebar size, as well as our tire pressures too. Now both of our bikes are set up using SRAM's Red Explore group set and their setup one by. And I can almost guarantee you, you won't realize why the bikes are set up this way. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Because I want to talk more about comfort and compliance when it comes to your wheel and tire setup. Because naturally, people assume that it's just the tires doing all the work here. But that's not quite the case because it's how a wheel is built and the construction of the rim, which has quite a big impact on it all too. Now the ultimate goal here is to build a wheel which is laterally stiff, but vertically compliant. Now Forge and Bond not only think they have the answer to this, but also the solution to stopping carbon fiber going into landfill. Pretty bold claims, I know, but their parent company, CSS Composites, have got over 40 years worth of experience in the aerospace and prosthetic industry. Not only that, they've got some pretty huge customers too, in the likes of Trek. So I think they're pretty well set to make some of those bold claims. Their fusion fiber technology uses long chain nylon polymers instead of epoxies and resins, which are used in traditional carbon fiber manufacturing processes. Forge and Bond say that this new construction process allows the rims to absorb impacts through microscopic flexing in those fibers. It also enables the rims to be recyclable and formed into new forged carbon fiber parts, not just once, but multiple times over. Now I've got these forged carbon fiber tie leaves here as an example, but there are far more exciting things which can be made. It's essentially, it's anything that can be constructed using a mold, but just not another set of wheel rims. Now, increasing the compliance in your wheels means you're not solely reliant upon getting it from tweaking your tire pressures, and it sort of frees you up to refine your tire pressure and set up for perhaps speed rather than just using it to gain comfort. The wheels we have are 25 GRs, they're 25 mil deep, have a 25 mil internal rim width and use 24 spokes and designed for gravel. I guess hence the name 25 GRs. <laughs> yeah, 
I guess so. In terms of the wheel weight, well, the wheels that we've got built up with Industry 9 center lock hubs weigh in at 1,395 grams. Now, I know I've already mentioned some of the crazy tech gone into this wheel design, but there is so much really cool stuff going on here that we're actually going to send Ollie out to the factory in America to find out more in a few weeks' time. In terms of the tyres we're using, both our bikes, we've got the same setup. So that's the Gravel RC from Pirelli in a 45 millimeter width. Although on these wide rims, they come up ever so slightly wider. So a bit closer to a 47 or a 48. Even though these bikes can fit in a whopping big 57 millimeter wide tire, which by gravel standards is absolutely bonkers. Now, the course here at Big Sugar is renowned for being particularly tough on our tires. So we've got them set up tubeless using Silka's latex sealant, which also puts recycled carbon fibers to good use as well, helping to plug up any holes or problems that we encounter. So with that in mind, I've also got a pretty impressive stash of spares in my handlebar bag. We got a ton of CO2 canisters, a multi-tool with all of the little bits we could possibly need. We got tubeless tire plugs in here. We've got a patch kit. We've got spare quick links. We got a pump and a few TPU inner tubes, all stuffed inside my handlebar bag. And to help make it a little bit easier for Chloe, I'm basically gonna carry all the spares because we're gonna be riding together. We also have a little top tube bag on both of our bikes. Mine at the moment oh, is stuffed full of SIS energy bars and gels, but mixed in with that, we're gonna have some like real food too, things along the lines of flapjacks, and we're also gonna be making good use of all of the snacks at the feed zones. So the concept of making a bike comfortable to make it faster is something which Lauf have been behind since day one. And it's also a concept which is shared with the guys over at Forge and Bond Wheels. And I'm really hoping that towards the end of our 100 mile epic, our bodies are gonna be particularly grateful of that too. Now in terms of our actual bike setup, well, they're both pretty much the same. Both are built up with SRAM's Red Access Explore components. We've got 40 tooth chain rings up front and a whacking great big 44 to 10 tooth cassette at the back. In terms of crank length, Chloe's bike has got 170 mil cranks, whereas mine has got 172.5s. Oh, and we're both running freshly waxed chains, which the kind people at Silka have delivered to us here at the event. Keeping us comfy on the bike, we've got Celis San Marco Short Fit 2.0 saddles. I've got the wider L3 version. And I have got the narrower S3. Up front, I've got 38 centimetre bars. Whereas I've got 40 centimetre handlebars. Now these are the bars from Lauf and they're called the Smoothie. They've also got a flare to them and Lauf are saying they offer twice the compliance of other carbon handlebars. What else do the handlebars have incorporated in them? Ice. <laughs> not to keep your hands cold, but something that Lauf are calling integrated compliance engineered. Um, essentially, what it's doing is highlighting an area of the bike which Lauf have engineered to make the bike more compliant to improve comfort. It's something that continues on at the back of the bike as well, at the seat tube area, where there is up to 15 millimeters of movement to try and keep you as comfortable as possible. This is achieved through the carbon fiber layup and the construction where the seat tube meets the top tube. But what about this bottom bracket wizardry which we spoke of earlier? Well, this bike is designed around the BSA 73 millimeter bottom bracket standard, which those of you out there who are bottom bracket nerds will associate with a mountain biking standard instead of the road bike standard, which is BSA 68. What this is doing is helping to increase the tire clearance that this bike has down here at the bottom bracket area. But this bike isn't designed to be used with mountain bike cranks with that wider axle, because that also means you've then got a wider Q factor. What Lauf have done is work directly with SRAM to develop crank sets which use that wider axle, but road standard crank arms to keep you using that narrow Q factor. In addition to that wider bottom bracket standard, if you look closely down the drive side chainstay area behind the chain ring, you'll see that it's incredibly thin, just six millimeters wide. This is used to also help increase the tire clearance even more, and it's constructed from solid carbon fiber. And Lauf say no dropped chain is gonna be messing with a solid six millimeters of carbon fiber. However, what this does mean is that the bike has to be run in a one by setup. 
In terms of weight, my bike weighs 9.3 kilos and Alex's 9.4 kilos, minus the bags and spares. Now, also finishing our bikes off, we've got carbon fiber bottle cages and we are both going to have two 750 ml bottles on race day. And we've also got alloy out the front hedging amounts so that we actually know where we're going on this race. And if um, you want to see how we get on, well, you need to head over to GCN to check out the video. But that pretty much wraps up everything I could possibly think of about these bikes. Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I think you've covered it off. What should everyone do in terms of leaving us a comment? Let us know in the comments what you think of our gravel setup. That is a really good point, actually. Um, right, if you want to see more about cool bikes and tech, subscribe to GCN Tech. And um, we better go get our feet up, actually. It's race day soon. See you later. Good luck, Chloe.